Hello and welcome to Coffee Breaks with Nebraska Strong Recovery Project, where we as guests cultivating resilience after disaster. My name is Lisa and today I'm joined by Joe, who is going to be teaching us about self-awareness. Joe, thanks so much for being here. Hey, thanks for having me, Lisa. I'm excited to be here. I'm so glad. So, what is self-awareness? It's a good question. I love a definition to start some education. Um, according to social researcher Tasha E. Rich, self-awareness is um, our ability to see ourselves clearly hmm. so we can better understand how we fit into the world and how others see us. I think there is a lot of benefit in having a good understanding of me and what makes me tick and, and my kind of way of being in the world because if this, if I can align how I'm feeling in here, then I can also kind of align how I'm pro portraying myself out in the world. One thing I think that could benefit someone who is going through, you know, a post-disaster situation uh, with self-awareness is you, you have this ability to kind of understand what's going on inside your body. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about something like a, a physical stress reaction, like there are actual hormones that are released, you know, by your adrenal glands that flood your body with all sorts of, of chemicals that, that make your body ready to react, which in a lot of circumstances is great. If a train is coming down the track and your body's telling you, jump, like you need to jump so you don't get hit by the train. Right. That's really important. Mm -hmm. But actually, yes. what, yeah, we, we want to survive. Our, our bodies are built to survive. But, but when those kinds of chemicals are being released a, a little bit of doses every single day, that can add up to like too much of that stress chemical mm -hmm. in your body. And so basically to have self-awareness is to like cultivate the way that you can understand what's going on inside your body. So let's say you are, you know, you're a flood survivor and right now you have to deal with a whole ton of paperwork and paperwork really stresses you out, right? Mm -hmm. So you're sitting at your desk and there's papers everywhere and you're trying to remember the dates and you're looking through your folders, right? What you don't realize, what you may not realize without proper self-awareness is how much that's actually tearing at the stress inside of you and mm -hmm. causing this kind of physical reaction. And if that's left unchecked, I mean, you can have a really tough time. Yeah. If you work on your self-awareness, though, what you can realize is that you can build a break into that that work, or you can ask for help from a friend, and so that if you so that you have more of this kind of breathing room to be able to work through the things that are really difficult for you. But it, you need to first know that paperwork's really difficult for you, right. and that takes self-awareness. Right. So how do we work on being aware of how we're presenting and what's happening for us? How do we key into this? Sure. And the answer is practice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, practice, I like it. I, uh, Doable. So it's pretty cool. Um, so actually, one of the, t the tools that can be used is uh, meditation and mindfulness. Okay. And so we'll start with meditation. And uh, according to John Kabat-Zinn, who is really a very well-known figure in the mindfulness movement in the United States, he started the, uh, the, like the social stress clinic uh, at UMass uh, Medical School in Massachusetts. He really, his like the, the gentleman who brought this stuff to the West, mm -hmm. um, his definition of meditation is two words, paying attention. And I think it's really transformative because I think in the West there's a lot of misconception about what meditation is. You know, we, we think that you have to be sitting in a certain posture and you have to sit this way for a really long period of time. And maybe you'll levitate or, or you know, but you're right. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, really, I mean it seems know, very complicated. <laughs> it seems it, tricky. But actually, what, that's why I love the definition that he offers so much, because all you really have to do is pay attention. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, if you're present while taking a walk through a park, and by present, I mean just present, feeling the temperature, looking at the leaves, and not looking at your phone, and just really being present in your body during that walk, that is absolutely a form of meditation. Mm -hmm. um, if you are eating a meal, and you are just eating a meal. You are not checking your email. You are not yelling at the kids. You're just eating your meal and tasting every single bite. That's meditation. What, it, what, what he's advising and what they're saying is to just be mindful of the things that you're actively doing. Because when you're mindful of those things, um, you're, you're present in your body. Yeah. Let me just say this. The next time you're taking a shower, this is a great exercise. While you're in the shower, think, am I actually in this shower? Pose yourself that question, because when you're in the shower, you should feel the water. 
the temperature of the water, right? You should see the steam. You can smell the scent of whatever products you're using. Mm -hmm. um, but most of the time, people, when they're taking a shower, are planning their first 9 a.m. work meeting. They're thinking about how they're going to pick up the kids after school. They're thinking about how breakfast still isn't on the table, right? And listen, these are all practical, real things, but if left unchecked, they call this autopilot. John kabat calls it autopilot. And if it's left unchecked, what it can lead to is that we're never actually where we are. Mm -hmm. And that could be really bad. <laughs> right, because you're always moving on to the next thing. Exactly. And you can miss the things like, wow, I'm in this shower, and I can actually take this moment to be alone, mm -hmm. to feel the temperature of the water, to maybe adjust that because it's too hot or it's too cold. Mm -hmm. But you don't, we often don't think that way because we're already on to the next 10 or 15 things that we have to do. And so kind of bringing it back to the present moment um, can be really beneficial, I think, for people who, whether post-disaster or just all people in general. I mean, How much does one need to be doing for this to be beneficial mm -hmm. in taking that time to be present, notice with curiosity what's, what's happening? Sure. And that's a really good question. And I think it depends on the individual. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if I always advise to people, if you're going through more than usual stress or post-disaster stress that you're encountering over and over really, really challenging and trying issues, then you should do more self-care or more spend more time present or more time in meditation because it will allow you to fill your reserve back up so you can mm -hmm. go back out there and face what is going to be a trying day, day after day. Right. If we don't take time to breathe in the calm, then there's no way that we're going to be able to give in the exhale to every single person that we have to give throughout the day. So I, you know, it really depends, but I, I, I started my meditation practice by five breaths before I went to bed. Um, so that I was there, I would say I'm going to take uh -huh. five breaths. And, you know, these days I can sit up to an hour in meditation, but typically I sit between 10 and 15 minutes a day yeah. in meditation. Um, but it can start as small as a few breaths a day. Awesome. Really, yeah. That's so cool. So with that in mind, meditation, mindfulness, it's all self-awareness. Be present in the moment. Give yourself permission to just take a few breaths and notice where you're at and keep going because you can do this. Thank you so much for joining us for Coffee Breaks with Nebraska Strong, and we'll see you next time.